Welcome back, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to do what will hopefully be a quick introduction to for each, and we'll discuss when you might use it versus when you'll use something like map. So first things first, if you're not familiar with for each, it is a list iterator, and it accepts a function, and the callback function will receive the current value being iterated over, the index, and of that value and the array that's being iterated over every time the function's called. So you can basically think of it as map that doesn't return a value. And so if you can think back to my map video, which if you haven't seen, I would recommend you check it out. Uh, I made the comment that uh, map is when you, you use map when you want to do something to an array or to a list, and you use for each when you want to do something with that array. And I'll actually refine that a little bit further here because my opinion has changed ever so slightly on that. Uh, so, first thing, we'll just do a couple quick examples. I've got my usual nums array. I've got a function called print num. All it does is accept a num from that array and then print it out to the console. And uh, down here, we're calling for each on nums, passing in print num. So let me clear the console log first. And if we run this file, then we will be executing this, which will print each num out to the console. And so you can think of it very logically as far as the English language goes. You are taking nums and for each console logging it. So sometimes if you're writing out some pseudocode or something to figure out what a function needs to do, you can very easily say, for each element in this array, this needs to happen, and it's a good hint to your future self that you'll be doing some sort of list iteration. So in this case, we're just printing to the console. But one way that you can distinguish for each from map is, for example, if we give it a return value, and then we, let's console log the entire thing. Oops, not a capital C, console.log. Uh, intro. Now we get the entire list being iterated over and then an undefined return value because for each does not give you a value when the function is run or the method is called. But if we were to switch for each out for map, and then run it again, then we get the return value uh, replacing every single element in that array because we said no matter what you pass in, we're going to give you back 10. So it returns an array that's 10 long with the values 10 in every single uh, spot in the array. So with that out of the way, the way you can actually create essentially the same thing as map with for each is if you create an empty new array and then have a function that pushes the transformed value onto that new array, you can basically fake what map is doing, but it'll be done in two steps instead of in one. So if we then were to console log out uh, new array, and replace the callback function with add to array. Then we're going to get that transformed function where every or transformed array where every value in the array has been increased by one, and it's just the same as if we were to replace. Oh, I did dot map there, so that would have worked the the exact same way. But let's do for each. You'll notice that because I ran dot map, you can pretty much do dot map for anything that you would use dot for each for, but not vice versa. So let me run this. And again, we get the exact same thing because it still has that same side effect, uh, but we couldn't have done something like let's uh, new array equal nums and then console log new array because that will give us uh, an undefined value. 
But if we replace that with map, then we're going to get a valid. Uh, oh, right, because I would have to make this a return. And if we just did return, then we get our transformed values. So why might you want to have a return value, and when might you not want to have a return value? Let's check out an example of using for each to read the contents of four different files, which we've put into a list of, uh, of file names called rex. And then we have a function called read and print. And read and print will be our callback function for for each. It'll receive the file name, pass it into read file. Read file will encode it as UTF-8, which means it won't be just a buffer. We'll actually be able to read the content. Uh, and then the callback for read file will either get an error and log out the error, or it will get the data from reading each file and it log, or console log that data out to the console. And so this is one way that you could create side effects that actually interact with other files. So let's look at it here. If we do node for each, then we get the contents from each file individually. Uh, and they're all logged out to the console. So that works just fine. But if we were doing something instead of console logging, where we had to reference this data, we might want to be able to do something like, oh, there we go, nice. Thing for example for a second. Do something like this, uh, data equals, and then do something, oops. All right, well, I just got rid of that somehow. Uh, and then do something with data that is logic. Um, so we want that return value and be able to handle it synchronously. And so the, when you want to be able to get a return value is when you is a situation where you want to use map. Oops, I wanted to edit that. Yes. So in this case, what I've done is taken that same request array, but I've used First, I've used map, and then to log out with the console, I've used for each. So what we're doing is creating a promise for every file that will be read, passing all those promises into all data, and then when all the promises have resolved, we are for eaching over that list of data and console logging each uh, um, file content out individually to the, uh, or we're logging each one out to the console. So you might say, well, this seems overly complicated. Why would you want to do that? And again, it's because sometimes you need to do things with a list where the response is relevant to the rest of your program, whereas other times you're not. So when you're console logging, you're not going to use a console log later in your program. So the way you could think of it if you're going to use functional programming terminology would be you'll use for each in a situation where the side effect that the list iteration is having is not relevant to the rest of your program. I'm not going to reference a console log later in my program. That's just for me. So if I were doing, a say, some post requests here to, I don't know, a server somewhere or an API, and that, was never, that information was being sent out. I didn't care when it resolved. I wasn't listening for the response. All I needed to do was, if that threw an error back, I needed to log the error somewhere. Then I could probably for each those requests, because I don't need to handle the response later in my program with any relevancy to the state of the rest of my program. It's just going to throw an error and let me know next time I check the error log that we had an error. Whereas if we don't get this data in this particular version of the program or of the yeah of the program, then map will actually interrupt the entire program and say there was an error and stop the program and log it out to the console. And so this would allow us to do something like if we got the data and we did need to apply all of that logic, which I believe was something like that, um, you 
can then actually treat this as a return value that could then be used in another request. So if you need to gather all that data together and then do another map and transform it some other way, and then maybe you were going to take that value and for each that and send that on a post request somewhere, then it gives you a lot of control over the state of your program that for each simply does not. Because unless you're doing a bunch of callbacks with for each, then you don't have that same dependability and control over the state of your program. So what I would recommend is any time that you're asking yourself whether you should use for each or use map, ask yourself whether the response to that iteration is going to matter later in your program. If it is, like it is when we're doing request.map, we want that data. Let's, again, imagine that we needed to do something important here uh, that was relevant to the rest of our program other than just logging it out to the console. Then this is where you would want to use .map because we do need to reference that data. Whereas a console log, it's a side effect that we cannot use later, and it has no relevancy to the state of the rest of our program. So we can just for each that. Whenever it finishes, it doesn't matter. It's or We can basically imagine it as being asynchronous if it was, for example, a post request to a server. And it doesn't matter when it finishes. It doesn't matter if it finishes as far as the uh, rest of our program is concerned. We're just sending it out there, and whenever it's done, it's done. That's when you can use a for each, in my personal opinion. So I hope that helped. Uh, sorry if I, my voice sounds a little weird. I do have a bit of a head cold, but I wanted to try to get a video out to you. Uh, I'm liking the, the two-day-a-week two -a -week consistency. So let me know if this helped. Again, I went with bigger font, so let me know if, it's, if you're able to read that. Leave a comment down below if you want me to cover anything in particular. Thanks to anybody who's actually watched the videos so far and has been kind enough to subscribe. I appreciate that, and I'll keep these things coming. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.